Hello and welcome to this Java tutorial series for beginners. In this first video we're going to simply be installing the Java development kit and the development environment so we can actually program in Java. So the first thing we're going to do is head over to Google and type in JDK for Java development kit and we can go ahead and click the very first link here. You should land on the official Oracle website and what we're going to do, we're going to download this one here, the JDK and whatever current version it may be at the time of viewing this, and then NetBeans also, whatever version it may be. So we should land on this page here. You can accept the license agreement. And then now you need to pick the correct version of Java for your operating system. Uh, I have a 64-bit Windows computer. That means I choose this one. Uh, the times 86 is for 32-bit systems, so just make sure you select the correct one for your computer. I'll select this one here. Then you can uh, download it. I've already got it downloaded. So once you've downloaded it, you can bring up the installer here. It may take a couple of minutes to uh, initialize the installation. That's what happened for me anyways. So once you're on this window here, you simply press next. It's a pretty standard installer. Uh, we can install JUnit here. We're not going to be using it in this beginner series, but it's worth installing it just so we don't have to later. Um, you can't really change the default path unless you run it as administrator, but we want to keep it. Uh, we want to keep it in this default path anyway. Then you can choose where you install Net uh, NetBeans to, and then we want to check this box saying check for updates because when we're programming uh, in NetBeans, we always want to make sure we have the latest version of it. And then we can go ahead and press install. Now this will take varying amounts of time depending on the speed of your computer, but once this is all installed we can begin looking at programming our first bits of Java. So when the installation's finished you'll be greeted with this screen and you can check or uncheck the contribute to NetBeans uh, project. So let's hit finish and hopefully boot up NetBeans for the first time. If it doesn't launch automatically, just double click the icon that should have appeared on your desktop. Uh, if you've already had NetBeans installed, you can go ahead and click yes on this. And then we'll wait for it to load up. And let's just make this the correct size. Okay, so now that we have NetBeans installed, we're greeted with a completely blank, uh, pretty much blank window. You've got, the, you've got your projects over here, and this big white space here is where we're going to be actually programming. So the first thing we're going to do is make a new project. We can go ahead up here and click New, New Project. If you can't see this button for whatever reason, you can just go ahead and press File, New Project, like so. And we want Java, Java application, hit next. And then we can name the application something. And then we want to save this to a location that is relevant to us and will remember it. Uh, usually NetBeans, if it's the first time of installing, it will create a folder in your documents called NetBeans projects. So I'm going to just save it in there. And then you'll see here it has this create main class thing. We're going to uncheck this and then hit finish. So now we're greeted with our project in the side and still nothing over here. So we can click the plus to expand our project and we have source packages and libraries. Now in this libraries folder is basically the Java development kit. This is basically Java in a nutshell. We never really want to touch this libraries thing. This basically just holds all of the default uh, classes, default libraries for Java that we're going to be using in our projects. So source packages is where we want to be looking at. So we can open this and you see we have this default package here. So the first thing you need to know about Java is it organizes uh, the programming into things called packages. And packages are quite simply just folders which are relevant to different bits of code. So depending on what project you make, you'll have different packages that organize your code together, just like you do with any other uh, projects you're doing when you're making uh, different folders. So we can go ahead and click new Java package, and this could be called whatever we want. 
but we're going to stick to Java naming convention for packages, which is basically making sure uh, the package name is all lowercase. And also we can't use anything like special characters or anything like that. So I'm going to name this package tutorials and hit finish. So now we see we have this package here, still empty. We're going to right click new and say Java class. And then we're going to call this class main with a capital M and then hit finish. So the class that is generated for us, you see there's a lot of text already. We're going to remove all of this and then uh, type everything from scratch just so we can get a feel uh, for what the Java programming language is like. Now, if you've ever done any programming before, then some of it might look familiar. And if you haven't ever done programming, then don't worry about it because I'm going to be explaining things as we go along. So without going into too much depth about what every command I do does, just make sure uh, you copy it how I write it down and rest assured everything I write will be explained now or at a later date, depending on when it's relevant. So on the first line here, we need to write package tutorials. Now, this first line here simply states that we're using uh, this class here is within this uh, tutorials package. And this is just a thing that we uh, have to do in Java. Whenever we have uh, packages, we need to make sure uh, we declare what package the class is in. It's just a way of organizing all of our Java files together. Again, not going to go into too much depth about what uh, the stuff does. It will be covered at a later date. So we're going to go down a, f a couple of lines. And then this is where we're going to make... Uh, we're going to basically declare our main class here. We're inside this file called main.java. And Java works in by using a series of classes. And uh, can't go into too much detail yet again, sorry. But we will be covering this more in depth at a later stage in this series. I just m want to make sure that uh, the absolute beginners here aren't thrown, doesn't don't have loads of information thrown at them, uh, which isn't going to make much sense. So all you need to know about the next line of code that I'm going to write is that it is basically an entry point for our program. If you've ever done programming before, you'll know that you need a kind of main entry point for the program where the compiler looks to uh, and says this is where the code starts, this is the first bit you need to run. And that's exactly what we're doing here. So just copy, copy it as I type it out. We're going to write public class main. And the you can see in Java, you can see already that we have these highlighted blue words. These are keywords in Java. There's a lot of, I can't remember exactly how many, but there's a lot of set aside keywords in Java, which we're not going to be able to use uh, for when we're like naming variables and stuff like that. And there's a lot of words like this, which are just reserved for Java because they do something uh, specific. So we're going to write public class main. Make sure that main here is spelled exactly the same as, whoops, make sure it's spelled exactly the same as the file name. That's one thing we need to make sure that the class name is always uh, exactly the same as the file name. So after we've written public class main, we're going to open and close these uh, spike brackets here. I'm not sure the official name for them, uh, but it's if you hold shift and it's the square brackets uh, to the right of the letter P on the keyboard. Hopefully that makes sense. So it's those spike brackets there. Then we'll make a few line breaks here and make sure we keep correct uh, like tabbing convention in Java. It should do it for you automatically, but basically as you sort of go down uh, in code with more and more brackets, you want to indent more and more because it makes the it it makes sure that your code looks nice and it's easy to read. So after we've written public class main, we're going to come down, make sure we're tabbed in so it looks nice. We'll make some space just so it's easier. And now that we've declared the class, we're going to declare the main method. And this main method is pretty much going to look the same throughout this entire series and pretty much into the future when you start programming uh, Java by yourself. But all you have to know about this main method is you don't need to know the exact syntax of it and what all the words mean. You just need to know that this is the entry point for the program. And when you hit this run button up here, the first code that's going to be run is the code inside this uh, main method we're about to write. So we're going to write public static void main like so. Make sure main has a lowercase m in this case. And uh, the fact it's called main isn't to do with the file t the file name, unlike the class name is. So the class name 
is the same as the file name, but this main method here just happens to be called main because we named our class here. This class could be called anything uh, that we wanted, but this main method is always called main. So we're going to open uh, normal brackets, parentheses now. Then we're going to write the word string with a capital S. Then do an open and closed square brackets like this. And then we'll do a space and say args, A-R-G-S for arguments. Then we're going to do a space and open the uh, spike brackets that we used for the class declaration. And then in NetBeans, if you just hit enter, it's going to automatically make that closing bracket. Make sure you don't get confused with... Uh, the brackets in Java. As you can see, if this one's missing, you can see we get an error down here because uh, it's trying to use this last bracket as the closing one for this, and it means this one was never closed. So just make sure uh, you don't get confused with opening and closing of the brackets. So we can delete, let's go ahead and delete this uh, white space here. So again, um, don't expect to know what any of this means. I know it's kind of throwing you in the deep end at the start, but it's kind of necessary for starting uh, the basic stuff. Uh, this is pretty much the most complicated part of this uh, beginner series, just remembering what to type uh, for this bit. But all you have to know is the we have a main class. I know I haven't really explained what class actually means, but we have a main class here, and then we have our entry point of the program, which is called the main method. And you don't need to know what any of this, any of these keywords mean in here. All you need to know is that the code inside these two brackets is going to be run first by the program. And we're going to go ahead and make a hello world program. We're going to print something out to the screen. <laughs> and again, the printing out to the screen doesn't look too nice either, especially for a beginner. We're going to write system with a capital S and then do a full stop. Then we're going to say out and then full stop and then print ln for print line. And then it, we can open close brackets, you see it puts a semicolon at the end automatically. We need to make sure we add those semicolons uh, to the end of every line. Uh, we're going to do the double quotation marks, not single quotation marks. It has to be the double ones. And then we can finally write hello world and make sure we put a semicolon on the end. So to sum up this tutorial, uh, you don't have to know, you pretty much don't have to know what any of this up here I've typed is. All you need to know is after this public static void main, this is the entry point for our program. When I hit run here, it's going to run all of the code inside of here. And the code that we have written, this system out print line, you don't need to know the intricacies of how this works. You just need to sort of memorize the system dot out dot print line. And remember that when you write this with the brackets, whatever you put in speech marks, it's going to print out to the screen. So we can go ahead and click run. It's going to come up with this. We'll select the main class, the only class we have. Hit OK. And you can see the output down here. It has hello world, build successful. So a lot of that won't have made sense already, I know. Uh, but in the next few tutorials, we don't have to worry about any of this up here. We're just going to be working inside this main method. We're going to be learning the basic syntax of Java. And then later on in the series, we're actually going to be learning what this main what the main method means and what the classes mean and stuff. And then it will all come together, hopefully, at the end.